And Ms. Vargas. Vice Chair. Uh, good morning, Mr. Daigle, again. And I wanted to thank you and your staff for appearing before committee today. Um, can you expand a little bit more on the Community Proud campaign that you mentioned in your uh, opening remarks? I understand it's for local nonprofits, uh, festivals in different communities. And I think I took some notes. Uh, you have spent $200,000 on 20 festival sponsorships. Um, well, I just wanted you to know that we have in my riding of St. Croix, McAdam Family Festival, just to name a few, the Campobello Fog Fest and Sea Glass Festival, Chocolate Fest in St. Stephen, and the Winter Warmer Festival in St. Andrews. How, if those uh, festivals wanted to apply for funding, would they go about it? And would there are different qualifiers, I imagine. Thank you for the question, um, and the reason I thank you is because this is a very, very important part of who we are as a company. We live here in Atlantic Canada, we live here in New Brunswick, and, and we love to support the communities. In fact, one of the pleasures of my job is meeting every new employee that we hire, and one of the questions I ask them when they come to our organization is why did they choose us uh, as a career? And almost every single time they talk about the community involvement that our organization has, um, the spirit of giving back to community. And so um, uh, our sponsorship, as I said, we are in the vicinity of $200,000 in New Brunswick, over 20 festivals. I can give you some examples of festivals that you would recognize. Um, this last year was the ECMAs, the Harvest Music Festival, the Sussex Balloon Festival. We had the 30th anniversary of Pays de la Seguin. And so we are truly all over the province. Now, with regards to how organizations are qualify for a sponsorship, uh, we do have a, a fairly robust application form to go through. It's, it is an, an objective form, and it's based on alignment with uh, you know, our key business initiatives, which is about community and culture and heritage. Uh, it, it is about equitable representation around the province um, and across the region. Um, and, the, and, you know, it, and we do look for signature events for community. We have a, a sponsorship application form that we use, and it is, uh, it is done through a third party, and so it, it is very objectively um, evaluated. My advice is for applicants to engage in that process early, as early as they can. Um, and, the, and the reason for that is because on a quarterly basis, we do have, we do have to close off the process just for efficiency and, and administration purposes. Um, and so it, it is a, um, it, it's, we absolutely love the program. Uh, we know that it's here to stay and, uh, and, and, and we are excited uh, to continue um, playing a material role in, in the communities. That was going to be one of my questions, if you're going to continue the program. Uh, when is the cutoff? Like for say this year, has it already passed or? Well, as I, as I said, there are quarterly there are quarterly cutoffs. So so it's not a case necessarily where the first person who applies that is successful uh, gets all of the funding. So we have our funding allocated throughout the year. Um, one of the things that I think we need to do a better job at is um, advertising and promoting and communicating this process. Uh, we do on social media. We absolutely talk often and and as much as we can because we're so proud about our community proud program. But, but um, you know, this conversation tells me that we need to do an even better job of getting that message out. Mm -hmm. And it's just for festivals and community involvement uh, initiatives. It's not for things like, I think we discussed earlier, medical clinics or helping along in that manner. That's right, yeah. So these are community-based events. Okay. Thank you very much. I think uh, those are my questions, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Turner. Uh, Mr. Turner.